This particular form is an absence request. It was built in InfoPath and published to a SharePoint site. The form has a built-in approval process with up to three levels of approval that you can define. So let's go ahead and take a look at this form and the approval process. To get started, I'm just going to click here to create a new form. So once the form loads, I can go ahead and enter my name. You can see here that with the request date, it populates automatically with today's date. I can choose my department. And here I can enter a phone number. And you'll notice with certain fields, if you hover over them, you get a screen tip that tells you the exact format that the data needs to be entered in. All right, there we go. Beneath the general information, I can go ahead and enter in the dates that I am requesting off. Now in this situation, I am going to be requesting off a whole week. So I'm going to first start with the Monday date, choose the type of time that I'm taking off, so it'll be paid time off, and then enter the amount of hours. And then I can insert another row. It'll automatically put the next date here, pull down the type, and then I just have to enter in the hours. And I'll do this for the rest of the week. And then when I'm finished, it totals the hours down here for me. And I can even put notes in here if I would like. And then I also have a section where I can enter contacts that can be used while I'm away. So here I have business contact. I can enter in the name of a business contact. And the phone number, once again, I have that screen tip. And then email. And I can even insert other contacts as I need to. Once I'm finished, I just click Submit. So we can see here that the current status is Approver 1, and the next Approver is also Approver 1. This is where you would see the name or group of the next Approver. So this Approver would receive an email with a link that would bring them directly to this form. And now when they open up the form, they see a read-only view of what the requester has entered, and then they can go ahead and make comments and then choose to approve or reject the form. So they're going to go ahead and approve this one. And then it just moves forward in the approval process. So now it's current status approver 2, next approver is approver 2. That approver would receive an email with a link. And then they can see what the previous approver did and they can make their own comments and then hit approve. And then finally, the third approval level. They can see the previous two approval levels, make a comment, and then approve. So now the current status is completed. An email can be sent to the requester to let them know that the approval process has been completed. And if they open up the form, they can see a read-only view of what they entered, as well as what the approvers have done. Next, let's see what happens when a form is rejected. So I'm just going to create a new form. And this time I'm just going to request one day off, and then I'm going to go ahead and just submit this. All right, so as we saw earlier, it goes to Approver 1, which Approver 1 would open. And let's say they notice that the contacts are blank, and they really want to see this employee enter in contacts while they're away. So they're going to say, please enter contact, and then they're going to reject. So now what would happen is the employee would receive an email letting them know that this has been rejected, and it would give them the form comment, please enter contact, and then they could open it up, and they can see the, the comments and, and who rejected it. They can click originator, modify, and resubmit. This opens the form back up for them, and then they can add in a contact and resubmit. And then it goes back through the approval process, and all the approvers can go through and approve it. This would be the same no matter what level rejects. 
the requester can go back in and modify and resubmit. And that's an absence request form. <laughs>